I want to welcome you to this teaching moment from Generations Christian Church. My name is Johnny Scott. I'm the senior pastor here at Generations. And one of my mentors told me long ago, as very young in ministry, he told me, so Johnny, the, the job of preaching, the job of a preacher at a local church is to whet the appetite of all, everyone in the congregation for the Word of God. I really hope that in these next few moments as we dive into a text and see how God's Word is alive and active, that one thing happens, that you get hungry for the Lord. And here's what happens in, in that process. Uh, G Jesus is going to have you pour yourself out so He can pour Himself into you. See, the less of ourselves we have, the more room, the more capacity we have in our lives for God to pour in. It's someone that's completely full of themselves that says, I'm not hungry for God. To get hungry for God, the first thing you've got to do is pour out everything that you have so you're an empty vessel waiting to be poured into. That's my prayer for you as we walk into this teaching time, whether you're going to listen to it on a podcast or you're catching up in the week, uh, wherever you're at during this moment, would you become lesser so that God can become greater in you. It's going to give you joy and you're going to get more from this teaching time if that's your mindset as you walk into this. You know, one other thing I want to tell you before we dive into this teaching is this. Uh, I, I grew up a kid going to uh, the local church. It was a local church with a, a youth pastor and a group of elders and volunteers at that church that transformed my life in really one of the, the deepest, darkest times of, of my story. And I still believe that the local church is God's plan for the salvation of the world. So if you are a, consider yourself a, a vital part of Generations Christian Church, and maybe you're on vacation with your family and you're going to watch online or you're, you're catching up doing a workout, I, I want to say this. Make sure that you're involved. Make sure you're involved in church because you can get content from so many places. But what God wants for you is to be a part of a local church where you're serving and you're giving and you're pouring into what God is doing there because there's more for you than just hearing a message. And there's going to be something I'm sure great in this message that the Spirit of God is going to use to transform your life. But you're missing out on a larger part if you're not really involved. And so if you're not in close proximity to Generations Christian Church and you're enjoying this teaching and it's being meaningful in your life, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. Praise God for that. We're so excited to be able to bless you in this way. But I would, I would encourage you, find a church around you that you can serve and give at because that's God's ultimate plan is for all of us to be a part of the church because that's the bride that he's coming back for one day. Thanks for being with us today and may God use this teaching to bless your life. Good morning. You can have a seat right where you're at. I'm like, I'm like one of those videos on, uh, I think, Instagram, not that I should spend much time there, uh, where the mom gets in the car and she's got all the things and she's like, here, hold this, here, hold this. That's me right now carrying all this up in the name of motherhood. I welcome you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> My name... <laughs> My name is Jen Scott. I happen to get to the opportunity to minister alongside Johnny here, and it is such a blessing to be here on this Mother's Day. And so I, he, he said, you know, it's Mother's Day. Would you mind preaching? And I'm like, is that a vacation for me? So we had an agreement, right? <laughs> we had an agreement that I would do the things he does to prepare every week for a sermon, and then he has to do all the things that I do as mom. So when our little one came to, him, to me and was like, Mommy, Mommy, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm like, Go to the dad. Go to the dad. <laughs> I am out of commission. I come to you today. I got my Pastor Johnny tennis shoes on, my Pastor Johnny jack on, jacket on, and I actually have Pastor Johnny's mug that someone so beautifully made for him. It says, Johnny's mug, my mug runneth over. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? I really think that that should sit right here with one beside it that says, because my wife maketh the coffee every single morning. <laughs> His cup runneth over. Our cups runneth over. We're so, I'm so glad to be here. Happy Mother's Day to you all. Happy Mother's Day to the moms of many, the moms of few. Happy Mother's Day to the grandmas that have been doing this a lot longer than us. Happy Mother's Day to the stepmoms, to the foster and adoptive moms. Happy Mother's Day to those of you who maybe never had the children, but you've been raising a lot of other people's kids alongside of them. 
And might I just say happy Mother's Day to the moms that might be coming in here today with a little bit of hurting on the inside. The wayward son, the wayward daughter, the moms who want to be moms and haven't been able to be moms. The moms that have felt the disappointment of and grieving the death too young and the death too old. I just, I want to pray a blessing over you just with my words right now. I'm not going to do another prayer, but may you be comforted by the Spirit today. May he come into where you are right now and just make you feel his presence and his comfort and his help in this morning. And we just celebrate you uh, as moms today. I am excited. We are in week three of uh, the best chapter ever. And I got to tell you that, that I have been learning some things um, a little bit, a few days in front of you. God has been teaching me some things that I, I didn't know. And I love when you come around his word and things highlight and elevate coming, coming out of it. But this is the best chapter ever. I'm not sure who decided that. I don't know if it was our team. I don't know who decided that it is the best one. But I would say this. It is the best chapter for you to have a full understanding of the gospel message for what it means to be in Christ Jesus, that there's no longer condemnation. Johnny taught us that on week one. And last week, Jason taught us uh, that, there, that we have a war between our flesh and our spirit, that there's a war. And what matters is what the Holy Spirit in his power does inside of us and not what happens on the outside of, the, of us. And I get to pick up today right where he left off. We are in Romans chapter eight, best chapter ever, according to a few. I would actually have to say, I think my best chapters are Ephesians 3, in Colossians 3. Maybe you have some of your favorites. Romans 8, let's pick up right where we left off, verses 12 through 14. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Sons and daughters of God are led by by the Spirit. Sons and daughters of God, children of God, you who have given your life to Christ, surrendered it all to him, you are led by the Spirit, if you're listening. <laughs> it's quite possible that being led by the Spirit means something different to each of us. Maybe you're a little confused about what that means. What does it mean to you to be led by the Spirit? What does the Word of God say about it? Let's see what Jesus says in John 14, 25 to 26. Jesus himself gives, gives an explanation of what the Spirit does. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with, with you, but the Helper, love that word if you want to circle it, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The work of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to teach you about holiness and how he does that, the, the God Almighty Holy Spirit, how he does that is by helping you remember all that Jesus said and that he did. The Holy Spirit takes us back. How you know that you are being led by the Holy Spirit is if you are being drawn to want and to need and desire to delight in all that Jesus did. He goes on to say in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Jesus says that you will be, the Holy Spirit is going to give you power. How do I get that power? How am I led by the Spirit in his power? Here's what it is. You're looking to Jesus. You're looking to see what he did, what it means to live in the Spirit. What it means to live in the Spirit and be led by the Spirit is to look and, and talk a whole lot like Jesus. If someone says to you, that right there is full of the Holy Spirit. That song right there was full of the Holy Spirit. You, I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit it's telling me to tell you, here's what I want to challenge you with. Challenge that. Take it to the word of the Lord. If what is being said is from the Holy God Almighty Spirit that is dwelling within you, it better look and walk and talk a lot like Jesus. And what does that look like? In the Spirit, Jesus loved the unlovable, He moved into the broken. He healed and he touched and he cared for and he was kind to those that were the most marginalized. What does it look like to be led by the Spirit? It looks like a lot like Jesus with a lot of love, a lot of joy, a lot of peace. There will be peace when you are led by the Spirit. So then I beg to ask you the question, what does it look like to not be led by the Spirit? Well, I would say this. 
If you do not feel that, that the Holy Spirit is leading you to put to death the deeds of your flesh, that's what it said in the beginning and, uh, of this verse, uh, and you don't feel the helping and the teaching and the guiding, are you being led by the Spirit? Do you see and talk and hear and read and want to understand more and long to know what he has to say, what Jesus did? That is the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let's continue on. Romans 8.15 says this, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. It wasn't meant for you. Sons and daughters of God are not meant for a life of slavery. You weren't meant for that. What does it mean to be in slavery? It's the, the deeds of the flesh that we've got to allow the Holy Spirit to help us put to death. Here's the greatest thing. We are going to be enslaved to some, or run to something. We're going to be led by something. Being enslaved to it is when you give your all, your attention, your time, your effort, and your talents, and you're giving it all. And in our flesh, this is just a few of them that, that we tend to run to. I'm just going to list them out for you. Self-identity, self-worship, sex, money, status, physical appearance, entertainment, technology, phones, any religion outside of biblical Christianity. Those all might not be bad things, but when I put my time and my talent, everything that I have into that, and it takes my eyes off of Jesus, I'm not looking to him to remember all that he has done so that I can be a witness for him, then it has become an enslavement and I have chains and bondage to that thing. Even a good thing can become a God. I, uh, I'm going to actually invite Pastor Johnny to come up here, and he's going to be uh, part of my object lesson because we've all had to be part of his object lessons at some point. You know, if you're in the Scott family at some point or not, you are going to, so I need you to put this on, okay? Wait, where's the, where's the diddly-do? Right here. Hold on. Okay, so this is my makeshift. You know those backpacks that parents buy for their kids, like when they're taking them to an amusement park or they're going to put... <laughs> They're going to Bush Gardens, and they're like, come this way. Whoa, not like that. <laughs> uh, this, so this, this is uh, what I probably should have had as a mom of boys, but what I did not have as a mom of boys. Thank you so much for being up here with us. So, <laughs> so you, are, you are attached to me, and you are under my guidance and my protection. Uh, this makes me think of a story. When, I, when Riley was about five and Aiden was a newborn, um, I, I, I suddenly realized, you want to take this away from me? Don't take it yet. I suddenly realized that, um, come over here and I'll tell you a story. I suddenly realized that I was outnumbered, right? You, you have two kids. You can't get groceries in the cart and have the kid in the cart. And, you know, so I'm putting Aiden on the top, which I don't even know if you can do that anymore. If you can put the car seat on the I don't even know. But anyways, I would have Aiden in the front, and I had to teach Riley how to walk beside me. And I would, have, I would say to him, I would start like, okay, here we go. We're going to go into Walmart. Now, here's the deal. You have to keep your eyes on me. Your job, I say this now. You'll hear me in the, out there in the lobby with Mariano. I'm like, listen, you have to keep your I am not going to go looking for you. You better be looking for me. I've got these really good mom eyes. So I'm saying that to Riley. If you take your eyes off of me in Walmart, you're going to get lost. And that's your fault. <laughs> and so I would say that to him. And we went to Walmart this one day. Go ahead. You start wondering. And I saw Riley's eyes start to break from mine a little bit. He had taken his eyes off of mom. And he started to wander one aisle over. And I remember I decided I was going to make this a point of no return. We're going to teach this lesson once. I don't want to teach it five times. And I don't want to repeat myself. I let him wander. I let him go one aisle over. He wanted to go look at the boxes of cereal, right? I watched him as he crept around the corner to that, that, that aisle away from me, and he didn't even think about the fact that mom wasn't with him anymore. He had not, it had not hit him yet. And then he went one more aisle over, and then all of a sudden, as I'm watching, I'm, I'm right there. He doesn't know I'm there, and I'm peeking. Panic hits him. The fear. The fear. Oh, no. Mom has lost me forever. I've lost mom. Well, whichever way. I lost mom forever, and I saw him start to walk. This might be considered mean, but I let him. I let him walk to the front and ask for help. And can I tell you, oh, you take that go? You're going over there? All right, so you're doing a good job. He's doing such a good job. And he walked far, so as he wandered away from me, uh, I see him at the front, and I, it's that moment, that moment when he was like, Mom, I get what you mean now. I've got to stay with you or I will be lost. 
How many of us feel that way at times with God? We wonder far away, and honestly, the Holy Spirit will allow us to wander off down an aisle or two, maybe three. Some of you might be on aisle nine. And you've got your eyes so far off of who Jesus is right now, you don't remember what it is to be led by the Spirit. Maybe you've never been led at all. Can I challenge you today that you are not meant for that life. You're not meant for this life of, of slavery or this life of fear. And that moment when Riley realized that he had lost mom, you know what, there's nothing I would do or wouldn't do if my kids would come to me and say, Mom, I just need your help. Will you take the leash and will you guide me and will you lead me and will you show me? And I'm not going to be a mom that's going, come here, kid. Don't go down the cereal aisle. Come here, son. Don't go there. Don't go to that party. I'm not going to yank and pull. I'm going to be a mom that says, honey, let me just tell you what you're missing out on. You were not meant for that life. And the Holy Spirit, just like this, I'm going to detach you now. You can go. <laughs> you have done your job, but I need this. Hold on. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, in the same way that lets us go, he lets us go because what he wants is a moment of surrender, of us coming to him and saying, I, I, I need you. I don't have the power on my own to do this anymore. Because that list right there, let me tell you something, you're never going to get over any of those things on your own. It says it's the power of the spirit that comes in and helps you to put to death the deeds of your flesh. You will not do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. You have to be connected through the Holy Spirit for you to be able to overcome the things that you need to overcome. For the things, there's some things I'm telling you, when you give your life to Christ, there are some things, and it might sound like it's not fun or it's not as cool as what's happening over there. There are some things that you have to stop. And there are some things that you have to start. But it is the power of the Holy Spirit that makes you want to in the first place. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that takes the word of God and it highlights some things and you start reading this a little different and you're like, that was for me. It's on a Sunday morning. I love when someone comes to me and said, man, I think Johnny was in my house this week and I think he was listening to what we were talking about because that sermon was for me. And I'm like, that's the miracle of the, what the Holy Spirit does. He divides and he takes it to each of us right where we're at and we meets, he knows your name. If you are in Christ Jesus, he knows your name and you were not meant for a life attached and chained to the wrong things. You were meant to keep your eyes on Jesus so that you can give glory to God and be a witness to the ends of the world. We've got a job to do. The devil's job is to rob you of what you were meant for, of your inheritance, and he does it by distracting you and taking your eyes off of all that Jesus has ever done for you. Sons and daughters of God are meant to have a spirit of adoption. Let me just, let me just say this in, in verses. Let's just go back to, this, to the scripture. Romans 8, 15 to 17. It says this. You have received, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Remember whose you are. If you are in Christ, if you have given your life to the Lord, remember whose you are. You belong to him. You get his name. You have the spirit of adoption. He intends for you to walk and to talk and to live like you've just been adopted and been given a brand new name. That changes everything. This spirit of adoption maybe doesn't resonate with you. Maybe, it, it, I'm just going to be really honest with you for a minute. Johnny, our family is walking through a season of adoption. We are taking two boys in and we've decided to give them our name and to bring them into our home. When I read what does the spirit of adoption mean, I, I know what that means to me. I'm not sure what Paul meant to ancient Rome. It might have a little bit of a different meaning. But what it means to me is that it's a new name. It's a life and it's, it's a life we want to share with them that we want to show them the ways of the Lord, that he, they can remember all that Jesus has done. That's what it means to me. You have been given that spirit of adoption when you have asked the Lord to be the Lord of your life and you have surrendered control. You've handed the leash over and you said, God, I need you. You have been given a new name in Jesus Christ. 
Remember whose you are. And when you get that, I, I, I love when Johnny comes home from work because the boys are here all the time with him and I love that. But I love when he tells me that Aiden or Finley or, or any, Marielle, any of the kids, Riley, are in his office just crying for help. You know, like that help when you need help from your dad and your mom. You're like, Mom, Daddy, I can't get it off the top shelf. I need, you know, you know that kind of cry. Or maybe crying as an adult, like who do you cry to when you're a grown human? If you, you, who do you cry to? Can I tell you that the spirit of adoption gives you someone to cry to and he hears every single one. He knows every cry. He hears it and he cares about you. He wants to gift you his power. He wants you to have access to the love that you've never had before and to the joy that makes no sense when there's crisis and to the peace that surpasses all understanding, kindness when you were a jerk before and now you got a new name, goodness, faithfulness when it's so hard. He gives you this power, the self-control that it's gonna take to not be attached and enslaved to these things. That is what you gain when you give your life to Jesus Christ. When you declare, I cannot do this alone, I have to surrender it all to him, I can't go on. The Spirit gives you the spirit of adoption as a son and a daughter and as a child of God, and you get to cry out to him, Abba, Papa, Daddy, Father. Verse 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Somebody in this room needs a reassurance that you're a child of God. You need to be reassured of what your name is today. You were given a new name. Do not forget where you came from. You were not meant for that. There's somebody in this room tonight, today. Where are we in tonight? Are we in today? I've lost all track of time. That needs to hear for the first time that you can have access to a father who wants to give you everything that he has and you get it immediately. You have immediate access to his power and his purpose. And can I tell you that if you thought that this was a chain itself and that this was a bunch of rules, can I tell you what it becomes when you have Holy Spirit teaching you and guiding you and gently pulling you where you need to go? You know what this becomes? It becomes a wielded sword in your life, a weapon that you can use in moments of crisis. It becomes a, a, a gift to you that you wake up at 3 a.m. sometimes, right, Granny? We wake up at 3 a.m. sometimes and it's the only word that's gonna sustain the pain that you're feeling that day. Because there is no conversation with anyone else at any other time that is better than what the Holy Spirit has to give you. Can I say that to you today? You are running and I, I'm, this isn't just you, this is me. I spend too much time running to things that are false promises. They're not the true promise of God. I spend too much time talking about things that are fake and that are not freedom. There is only one real freedom and it is in Christ Jesus. And it is when the Holy Spirit gives you power to even understand that in the first place. Amen. Amen. We are children of God. Those of you who are in Christ Jesus, Johnny laid that out two weeks ago. If you need to understand that more, go back and watch that. What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? Children of God who are in Christ Jesus start to have a family resemblance, don't they? You know when you meet someone and you're like, there's something about that person right there. There's something different. Maybe you wanna have what they have, meaning they have that. It changes you. It gives you new life. It gives you a new nature. You know, the one part about adoption that is different spiritually versus literally right here, right now, is I can't change the nature of the two boys we're bringing in. It really isn't my job to do that. That's the job of the Spirit. But the thing about God's power is that He doesn't only take you and adopt you and give you a name. He gets to change your nature. I mean it, like the things that you have always been, you are no, you no longer have to be, you've always been depressed in your life. You know what the power of the spirit is? It removes that if you're being led gently where he's telling you to go. You get a new name, you get a new nature, 
You get a closeness to the Father that you've maybe never had or that you need to have. Immediate access to his power because what he does is he says this, look to Jesus. Look to him. Don't look to anything else. Don't look at what everybody else is. I'm gonna talk to some young person in here tonight today. Don't look at what your friends are doing. That is not directing you to Christ. You wanna have a life full and abundant? You take your eyes and you follow Christ and you look to his word and you find friends who are doing the same thing because any other version of that is not meant for you. It's not meant for you. You go to places. You're going places. You may be going, I don't know where it is. And you know that the spirit of God is not there and you're still going. You're on TV and watching things. Man, this is a challenge. I was talking with a lady about this today. You're watching things and you know that the spirit of God cannot teach you anything through that. And you're watching it. And you're, or you're on your phone and you're, you're just stuck in the, Facebook for 20, how many hours can a person fit in Facebook? Too many. I fear today that as Americans, we, uh, we don't ever really have a need for anything. Do you guys feel like that? I never have a need. I never have. I can, I can, I can fill everything with all of that. I can, I can fill myself up to where I don't even need it his help anymore. You step out of this country, you head into a third world country. I loved hearing my kids in the Dominican Republic this year. They, they started to see things a little, a little perspective that like what it means to truly worship when you really have a need to cry out, Abba, Father. What does that look like? Maybe you need to start to dig deep and see what's my need. I need to need him more. How do I get there? And you cry out to him and say, show me how. And you know what he's gonna tell you? Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. And you want to know why he tells you that? Because he needs you to tell the world of his goodness. He needs you to be a witness, as it says in Acts 1, 6. Because somebody needs a helper, Holy Spirit, and you've got to be the one sharing it. And that helper, I love that word helper that, that was in uh, John chapter 14. You know what that word helper means? It means comforter, one who walks alongside, counselor, he takes your hand and he's guiding you and he's leading you and it's so gentle and it's so wonderful and it just gives you a great sense of peace. He wants to call you out of your slavery today. I wanna to tell you how. I just thought I wanna tell you how you do that. It's how I do it, it's how I did it. I hear the word of God. I come here, I get in my Bible, I hear the word of God. I believe every word that he says in this sword, in this sword of truth the spirit of truth. I believe everything that he says is true. I confess I cannot go it alone. I'm gonna need this. And I need him to tell me how to go and where to go. And I surrender my life to, that direct, to his direction and his guidance. When I was nine years old, I followed it up in a tank. I remember the day Myrna Vandeveer sitting on the front row cheering me on. She was one of my moms, my fun moms that helped me through life. And then after that, that is where that spirit, I'm telling you, it just comes alive in you when you surrendered your life and you've surrendered your all to the one true savior. You live and you walk in a new life and that is how you get the power of the spirit to even know what this is at all. Because outside of that, you may not, this will make zero sense to you. There's a whole lot of nonsense in that to you if you're not living in the spirit and asking for his power in that. I wanna invite you all to stand. We're gonna close out this song. I, I know your name, is that the one we're doing? You know my name, I know his name. I wanna invite you, if you need to be known by the Father and you want a powerful spirit to come and to help you and to guide you and to lead you and to direct you, I wanna invite you. I'm gonna invite the prayer team to come down. Now, if you need that in your life, young person, old person, if you've wandered to aisle nine, and you're looking at the toys and you got lost. It's time to come back and get your eyes on the Father. Remember all that Jesus has done. Surrender your life to him so that he can be your power so that you can live in his spirit.